right, welcome back. You may have already seen my previous video, my battle report with the new Shadow Stalkers by One Page Rules. Well, now let's paint one. I plan to do this one in a more calculated, glazing based method. I say calculated, this is still my channel, so there's going to be very little actual pre planning. It's going to be tough on my concentration, but there is a reason that we'll chat about later. Right now, let's just jump straight in. After priming in any old grey, I use Drakenoff Nightshade through an airbrush, and that gives me a nice dark blue base coat. I've been thinking I'd like to try an army with pastel colours, and obviously Shadow Stalkers really, really lend themselves to that because they're very obviously not meant to be dark and spooky. They're meant to be bright and vibrant, right? I will, however, contrast that with some darker skin tones. So here I start with Red Leather by Scale Colour. My first few passes are going to be quite sketchy for each colour just messing around and getting an idea of how each bit would be lit. I'm leaving the underside and gaps mostly as that dark blue. Next up is Alien Purple on the Big Beast skin. I'm trying to decide on what colour I want the horns as I think they'd be a cool focal point. Look at them, they're all lumpy and weird. I don't even know if they're meant to be horns. I'm scared and I love it. For now though, I'm just going to paint them along with the rest and worry about that later. Right, finally, let's get some of those pastel colours down, starting with Fenrisian Grey. I'm using this as the basic clothing colour on most of these guys, so I do that on these rags hanging on the beast and parts of the dude's clothing. Again, this is sketchy and quick, not thinning the paint too much and not worrying about getting the deeper recesses. Now to keep with the pale colouring, I go to Ice Yellow. I feel like this might end up as the colour for the more command-based units and elites, but I don't really know if I'll make it that strict yet. It might be that I just choose colours as I go and I end up with this weird mishmash of pastel colours all over the place. Either way, this guy is getting mostly pale yellow cloth for his clothing. Now for a colour I got recently and I absolutely love. This is Bright Pale Green by Proacryl and I'm using it here for a lot of the harder details on the guy such as that shoulder pad and the collection of masks he's covered in. I want to use a leathery colour that will still look good in this kind of pastel base thing. So I went for Skeleton Legion for all these little straps and oh boy let me tell you there are a lot. I miss a few bits on the head and chest including the yellows and the blues so they get kind of filled in as I notice them. I use Surcoat Silver on the metallics. I will likely cut corners here since I never really enjoy doing metallics so instead of sketching values I just cover them. Okay, all the basic colours are down and right now it looks a mess. This is a real trust the process moment, which is not all that reassuring when I don't know exactly what the process will be. Oh well, it's about to look even worse. I take white star and just throw down a load of my highest highlights on the pastel colours. It's still sketchy so I can glaze down some smooth transitions later. At this step I also pick out the skin highlights by mixing some white into the original purple for the beastie boy and Sword Hilt Burgundy with some Fenrisian Grey for the dude. For that guy I chose these colours because I want them to stay muted so I don't want to highlight up to like a proper red or something more saturated. Right, let's start fixing this mess. First of all, I want to even out the gaps between the surfaces and some of the shadow tones. For this I'll use a very directed kind of wash glaze type thing. I mix together Drakenoff Nightshade with blue glaze to try and get something in between both colours and properties. The wash should make it slightly collect in the recesses while the glaze will hopefully keep it a bit more even. At least that's the theory. As per usual I had an idea and immediately implemented it with no prior testing. So uh, yeah let's just soldier through and hope it works out. I'm also going to keep the shadows all kind of bluish and highly saturated to make them look kind of weird and like, I don't know, the way we see them in our reality is kind of wrong or something. We'll see. The technique is similar to regular glazing, keeping a layer as thin as possible so it dries right away, but basically just involves focusing more on the gaps and allowing it to maybe collect there sometimes. Thank you. 
on to the next step. And here is where I have to start being more careful. I take my previous colours and thin them into a glazed consistency. This means the stuff coming off the brush is really, really thin and has very little pigment. Each layer is not going to make too much of a difference. But by carefully laying over the base tones and into the shades and highlights, I can create really smooth transitions and control where they go. Also, the idea is that you're doing them in such thin layers and they're so thin down that they'll dry almost immediately. So you can just work around the model and just keep going. So why am I doing this technique? Why encourage you to? As a self-professed short attention span haver, I typically go for more speed paint techniques and materials. Even within that realm, there's just so many methods to try. Zenithal, pre-shade, slap chop, oil washes, and the list just goes on and on. Well, for one thing, it's great to get out of your comfort zone every once in a while and expand our horizons. But also, this is a very calculated way of painting. People who win awards like Golden Demon tend to plan out in great detail where their light hits, what colouring the shadows take on, and all of those details. Now, since you were obviously wondering, no, I'm not a Golden Demon winner, but that's nice of you to think so, thank you. But still, even if I'm not going to be doing competition level, I think we can still just benefit massively from this more planned out style of painting every now and then, forcing us to kind of have to think about where the light hits, how the colours interact, all that kind of stuff. For example, the focal point of this mini is obviously Mr. Big Beastie Boy, and specifically kind of its head and shoulders. Those paws are kind of lower down and maybe just want a bit less emphasis. So I'll come back in with my blue glaze and just kind of take those colours down a little bit, along with any other parts, like maybe towards the back, that I want to be a bit more peripheral. As I do this, I'm also looking for other areas that might look too flat in one note. I'll use my blue glaze and just create some depth in the shadows or come back in with a brighter colour and just add that highlight. When you do stuff with as little forethought as me, you need to check it's all working together. As I make my way through the project, I like to keep adding the colours to other parts to get an idea of the mini as a whole, how the whole piece is looking. So now I base coat the smoke with Cantor Blue and the base with Leather Brown. I'm hoping this will work as a base tone to like shade down dark and then highlight quite bright and pale, creating the look of earth that's kind of slightly dried up. Right, that is actually looking basically how it did in my head. So yeah, I'm kind of happy. What's that? Well, genius may be a bit of a strong word, but thanks for saying, random viewer that I made up in my head. I do need to figure out these horns though, and I think a bit of green goblin colour scheme would be fun. Purple and greens, baby. I paint the majority of them white as I want them to kind of go to that pastel -y light tone along with the other elements of the army. After this is done, I take the moot green and mix it one to one with Ulthuan grey. This leaves that hint of a yellowy green, but takes it to more of that desaturated, calming pastel tone. I start with a thicker consistency to create an area of green over the white and dark blue, then bring back the glaze consistency to smooth it out and try to leave very little pure white. That blue glaze is doing the heavy lifting with this army and now I bring it back in again to create those shadows. As I said before, I'm trying to channel my inner golden demon painter and think about which focal points need to have the most contrast, where the lights will be coming from, and so on. With this process, you can go back and forth between the colours to get the right mix, and this is what I do here. For the smoke, I use full grim pink, which doesn't cover that well, so I don't bother thinning it. I do a few layers, leaving less paint lower down so the pink turns to blue closer to the source. I reinforce this with, yeah, you guessed it, some blue glaze layered towards the bottom. Later, I came back and used a bit of pure white as a highlight.
Now, I want to neaten up the leather straps, but for some reason I completely just ignore the colour I used earlier and I switch to leather brown. I mean, it's fine, I get the job done and it's a minor part, just weird choice to make, it looks a bit weird. I then highlight this with desert yellow, which is another colour I didn't use originally, and do a couple of passes with the blue glaze as it was looking weird. Let's just move on from that mess. I'm close to finishing, but the beast's rags look a bit dull. I thin some white and line up some of the areas I want to stand out. I then put some blue glaze over the mouth to tint the white bits and do a very slight amount of shading. Okay, now I can feel my attention span failing me, so I'm going to take a shortcut on the metallics as I expected. I use Drakenoff Nightshade to create some shading and then use Mithril Silver to highlight up again. I also paint this dude's big beautiful smile in Fenrisian Grey and highlight up with white. Okay, let's get that base finished. I use Gore Grunter Fur, spread over the texture with a bit of water to soften it up. When that dries, I'll dry brush with Desert Yellow and vary it up to create some slight variations. I focus more on those little rocky piles I've made to make them look extra dry. Now I just wanted the deepest bits to be darker still, so I took out Agrax Earthshade to wash it. I rimmed the base in black, added some pale grass clumps and then some dry yellow static grass and called that done. Here we go then, the finished result. I'm really happy with the colouring I came up with. The saturated shadows with the pastel tones just give it this weird kind of out of focus look in my opinion, exactly as I was hoping. So for the technique, this is longer than I usually like but definitely got me thinking about certain things more. With all the tools at our disposal like washes, contrast paints, dry brushing, it can be easy to just paint a model and not worry about it not really think about how you're placing things. This is by no means competition level, but I feel like I was able to work with the concepts those legends use and get an idea of how you can achieve awesome things with the minis. What do you think? Will you give this a try at some point? Is there anything you'd do differently? If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate your likes and comments and subscribe and check out my other socials, links down below. Well, okay then, that's it. Bye.